Hello, it's Riyadh and welcome back to the fourth video of Internal Medicine Board or ITE Review Cardiology. So the subject was inferior MI and um, basically inferior MI AV nodal block. So AV nodal block and inferior MI. Now, if you like to, if you would like to get a general idea, first the inferior MI maybe there is a problem with the SA node. Or maybe the problem will be with an AV node. So if I say node, the problem usually the patient now have sinus bradycardia. Sinus bradycardia usually it's common, around 40% in those patients, usually in the first two hours. And usually the cause of sinus bradycardia, maybe it's due to the vagal. So the vagal tone is usually high, or maybe due to the ischemia. And the ischemia, when, I, when we talked about ischemia, I mean renal, uh, I mean renal, sorry, right coronal artery ischemia. So, uh, so basically this is the first thing, which is bradycardia. Now, for bradycardia, usually it's transient, usually resolved. If it is persistent, maybe you can use atropine. And the dose of atropine is 0.5 to 1, and you can increase the dose of atropine to 3 mg. But usually, for inferior MI, everything, by the way, it's a kind of transient. And the reason why, because, because guys, it's usually a small area that's involved with inferior MI. Okay, so that's why bradycardia usually is transient. Now, if you give if you give a patient atropine or maybe the bradycardia kind of refractory even after atropine, so you have and the patient now have hypotension. So now you have to think about another differential. So could be this is due to right ventricular infarction. Could be just hypotension, by the way. So whether it's right ventricular infarction or hypotension, the treatment of choice is usually fluid. Okay, the treatment of choice is usually fluid. So again, this is usually the first things. Um, yeah, it's usually the first part of the pathway, which is uh, which is the problem with the SA node, and SA node problem usually leads to bradycardia. Now, the second part of the pathway, which is a kind of our subjective questions, in am I the same intranodal artery ischemia? So it's AV nodal ischemia, and AV nodal ischemia could be manifested as just first degree AV block, which is just which is basically an increased PR interval, right? Which is just just basically an increased PR interval, uh, and this guys look at this arrow. It is also transient and the result, which is five to seven days. Maybe this leads to second, I mean, eventually lead to second degree AV block. And the second degree AV block usually, especially in oral QRS complex, it's fine. Usually benign course also resolved transiently. There is no pacemaker indication until this time. At this time, sorry. Now. Complete heart block, yeah, could be usually persistent. Uh, usually, sorry, also transient. No, sure, it is not transient. Usually, it's also transient. So, if con uh, complete heart block or third degree heart block, usually it's also transient. Again, the same reason because usually the myocardial inferior MI is just a small MI. Now, if it is a kind of persistent, here we need careful monitoring and we will consider pacing. So, there's maybe, maybe. Maybe there is only one indication for pacing and inferior MI uh, block problems. If it is persistent, if it is symptomatic and persistent, maybe here we can consider pacing. But most of the time, it's usually transient, usually resolved spontaneously. Usually transient, usually resolved spontaneously. Now there is specific things. First, uh, first you need to know co a complete heart block usually with inferior MI is more common, by the way, than complete heart block in anterior MI. Okay, this is kind of interesting. It's more common than in complete heart block with anterior MI. Uh, second thing, uh, guys with anterior MI block is different. I mean, it's not a transient and you will wait. No, you will go with pacing and you will go with atrophy and pacing. And usually this is uh, anterior MI a block like, you know, if the patient have asystole. These are the standard, these are the standard indication for, for, for pacing, by the way. Let's say the patient have asystole, the patient have left bundle branch block, right bundle branch block, alternating right and left, alternating by vesicular blocks. These are, these are basically the indications of temporary pacing. But for MI, usually the MI questions, if the patient bradycardia asymptomatic, just a, uh, bradycardia, or the patient the first or second or third degree AV block, usually the answer will be just transient and because it's resolved spontaneously. Thank you.